Hi there, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. I can barely talk today, but I got a new project for you, which is this maple and walnut key rack holder to go by our new garage door. This is a key rack holder that is made out of maple with a walnut monogrammed inlay with the first letter of our last name. This is in the shape of the lower peninsula of the state of Michigan, which is where we live. We got a drawer for any of those knickknacks that we need for when we're stepping out and space for six car keys and tractor keys to hang on the bottom of this. And like I said, this is gonna go right by our new garage door so that we have all of these things handy right when we step outside. It really seems like all of my projects start over at the miter saw station, but really, I suppose that all projects start with breaking down your material into more manageable sizes. And my method of choice is over at the miter saw station. Got great dust collection and a repeatable miter stop, which makes things easy and safe. I am using a bunch of dimensioned maple and a little bit of walnut for this project. And this maple was pretty much flat, so it was safe and easy to cut over at the miter saw station. After that I moved over to the bandsaw where I resawed everything in half to make the yield of my material much larger. An easy way to make sure you have the exact center of the piece is to cut it and then flip it vertically and make sure your blade is directly over the cut you just made. If not, you can adjust the fence a little bit as needed to make sure you're right in the middle. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this maple was pretty flat to begin with, so I was able to skip the jointer completely and just start with skip planing and then make sure everything was nice and parallel. I need one panel glued up and this is actually going to be for the Michigan Mitten or the Lower Peninsula. So I took two of those pieces that we just planed up over at the planer and glued them together in a book match pattern. I did pick the pieces that had the most exciting grain, there's a little bit of curl at the top so that will be a nice display piece. I am going to be using my Inventables X-Carve to cut out the shape of the Michigan Lower Peninsula and the Monogram G inlay. Now if you don't have a CNC, I don't really know. You guys let me know what you would do. I would say you could use a jigsaw, but that would take a lot of patience and definitely wouldn't get you as clean a cut. So really the best bet, go find a friend with a CNC and give them your SVG files and they can import them and put them to use. If you guys would like to know more about the X-Carve, you can use the link down in the description below and you don't even have to get one you can use easel for free anybody can use that and practice with the software or draw up your own programs and send them to friends but it is easy work over at the x-carve to cut out this michigan mitten i used a 1 16th inch down cut bit and i had a perfectly clean cut i then changed the bit to a 1 8th inch bit to cut out all of the material for the inlay You will see the X-Carve running by itself in the background several times in this video, and that is one of the most beautiful things about a CNC. It can be doing a very repetitive or highly detailed task for you while you move on to something else. I am using my drum sander to sand down and get perfectly flat all of the pieces that will be used for the shelf and the drawer. Once the monogram G was done being cut out, I snapped it out with the chisel, made sure I had a good fit, and then moved over to the router table with a flush cut bit where I removed the tabs that hold the material in place while it's on the CNC. Once that was done, I applied a heavy amount of glue into the inlay cavity, and then used a piece of wood and a hammer to tap the G into place, making sure it was seated completely in place. And then I applied a couple of clamps to make sure nothing tried to crawl out of the pocket while the glue was setting up. And now it is time to make the shelf in the drawer. The point of the shelf is to hang the car and tractor keys underneath it on little eye hooks. And then the drawer is just for those knickknacks that you always need while you're running out the door last minute. I took the maple over to the table saw and cut it down to the final widths that I would need it for the box. And then taking into account the base of the box, I took some measurements and adjusted from there to make the cuts for the drawers.
Once all my pieces were to their final width, I moved over to the miter saw to cut them down to their final length. I used my stop block with these sticks that I have made to extend that stop block 10 and 5 inches, totaling 15 if I need it, and then in conjunction with my 10 million dollar sticks, I can make repeatable cuts every single time. For the assembly of the shelf and of the drawer, I am going to be using finger joints or box joints using my John Hines Design Box Joint Jig. You can find a link for my build video of this jig down in the link in the description below and I will also put a link to John Hines website where you can buy plans for this jig. It is a very very accurate and repeatable jig and I have had great use out of it over the years that I have had it done. I am going to be using 1 quarter inch finger joints and I know exactly the shims that I need in my data blade to make the perfect fit. I started out with the sides and you will see in a couple steps that I move to the top and bottom. The only difference between the two is you need to make sure that you index one of the pairs. It doesn't matter which pair, it can be either the top or the bottom or the sides, but you need to make sure that one of those pairs is indexed before you start cutting so that the fingers are offset accordingly. Once all the joints were done for the shelf itself, it was time to move over to the joints for the drawer. I only wish that I could work this fast in real life, I would get so much more done. A quick dry fit to confirm that I had everything right. I wrote down the exact shims that I needed for my quarter inch dado stack and I would recommend you do the same so that you get repeatable cuts every time. For the shelf and drawer glue ups, I added a little bit of glue on the inside of the finger joints and then pressed them together and added a couple of clamps. Always a good idea to use a square to go back and verify the squareness of your box so that your drawer will fit properly. And it does. It's a very good fit actually. One of the tighter fits that I've ever had with a drawer, which was kind of an experiment. I wanted to see how tight I could go. Now I'm attaching the front using wood glue and some quick activated CA glue just to hold it in place so that I can move on to other things. One of those things being cutting out the plywood back that will hold the shelf and the Michigan mitten together. I chose to use half inch plywood to attach the two together and I'm also going to be adding a chamfer on the back of this to kind of make it look like it is floating away from the wall and cast a little bit of shadow behind the Michigan mitten. I cut out the mitten on the bandsaw and this is nowhere near exactly the pattern of the CNC cut because this is not going all the way to the edge. This is going to be inset a little bit and then like I mentioned before a 45 degree chamfer is added to make it look like the whole entire thing is floating off the wall. And to glue all this together I use some wood glue and again some fast acting CA glue to hold everything together so I didn't have to add any clamps. To finish up this piece, I started with 120 grit on my random orbit sander and moved up to 220 which was the final grit that I used. I sanded to make sure the finger joints were flat and that the monogram G was perfectly smooth with the Michigan mitten. For the finish, I am going to be using General Finishes Endurovar in a semi-gloss sheen and I'm going to be spraying it with my Fuji Spray Systems Q5 Platinum Sprayer. Spraying is always the way to go, even if you think it will take longer to clean your gun don't doubt yourself. Get the sprayer out and spray the finish because you'll get better results and it really only takes a minute or two to clean out your gun. And I got to admit, it's a heck of a lot more fun to shoot with a spray gun versus using an applicator pad or a brush. And now to add a couple pieces of hardware to the project. The first is a knob on the front to allow you to open the drawer. And then I'm going to be using double hangers on this so that it won't rotate on the wall when you open the drawer and maybe pull on it a little bit to one side or another. 
An easy way to add these tiny nails on these hangers is to use a Leatherman tool in my case or just a needle nose pair of pliers. And on the bottom I will be adding six one half inch eye hooks and these will allow us to hang our keys on the bottom of the shelf. Well, there we are folks that is a wrap on this project and I think it turned out pretty nice the only thing that would look even cooler is if there were some LEDs lighting up the back of the Michigan mitten to outline that definition a little bit better I really like the style lately that I've been doing where stuff is kind of offset from the wall casting a little bit of a shadow like I said if there was lights back there it would be even cooler hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please hammer that thumbs up button helps us out a ton and gets this video in front of more eyes I'm DIY Tyler. I'm going to have some tea now to try to fix his throat. You guys have a good one.